Thank you all for coming. Just before we convene, um, I'm Lisa Woodmore. I'm chair of the Board of Health. Uh, Mike King will be here momentarily, I'm sure. He's vice chair. And yeah, I'm Rick Jacobs. I'm a board the member. member. The yeah. member. So, yeah. um, the and thank you so much for being here. I think everybody knows Sean McCall of the Nidia La Roche's. Um, <laughs> she keeps us all organized and on track. And Casey Morrow, uh, Morrow uh, who joined us recently. November 6th. Yeah. Huh? November 6th. Has it November been that long? Yeah, it has. Yeah. It's been great. Um, having a public health nurse. So we are going to switch the agenda around a little bit, and I'd like to ask Reese to come up and do her presentation on food allergies. We're really excited. And thank you for coming this evening. Whenever she sneezes, whenever she coughs, 
Reese, are you okay? Reese, are you okay? Reese, are you okay? You don't kiss her on her face <coughs> again. Even me, I, I don't kiss her on her face ever. Maybe on top of her head or in her hair. I would love to. That's a sacrifice that hurts. Reese is, you know, a little bit of an outlier, and yet not really so uncommon for us at the Food Allergy Center. These are the kinds of kids that end up being referred here because they are more complicated um, to manage. One of the things that we do a lot of are food challenges. Reese, do you like these? Yeah. What do you want to do with them? Do you want more pieces? Food challenge is where I eat a food that I'm allergic to. We give you a small, increasing amount of food to determine whether or not you're clinically sensitive to it. If they tolerate that, we're totally comfortable saying that you know, you're know not going to have a reaction out in the world. That is still the definitive way for determining you know, which of her food allergies she perhaps has outgrown. So Reese has undergone 14 food challenges at Mass General. Um, we've passed 13 of them. Each one of them has been a huge win for not only Reese, but for the family. Okay. It's one more food that we don't have to stress about. When I pass a food challenge, it makes me happy that then I can eat that food. Kind of gives me more freedom. Fortunately, <laughs> she has made a huge improvement uh, under the particular care uh, of her parents and her medical team. She's doing all kinds of activities, so I'm actually pleased with her um, overall development and growth. Reese is one of our patients who is participating in clinical research. She's part of an immunotherapy trial. The study will be used to help people, and that makes me feel happy. <laughs> Patients like these were incredibly indebted to because by their participation in the research studies, you know, they're really um, advancing the field for everyone else. I remain optimistic that we will find um, effective and new interventions for many people to do all of this well, as well as sort of educate around as well really does require, you know, a multidisciplinary team like we've been able to assemble. The thought of having her at school outside of our home environment was terrifying. I remember acting, asking Dr. Schreffler, are you doing to quit my job and stay home? And what did I do? And it was always, no, you know, you just need to make sure that the policies and procedures are in place. It's been so much fun to sort of see Reese bloom and to a poised, uh, articulate child who is a good advocate for herself and I think really feels empowered about the management of her disease. So this year we're actually going to have her take the bus home from school two times a week, which as a parent, you know, it's 45 minutes of unsupervision on the bus. I know she lives in the school bus and I can't wait to ride it. It's a feeling that I've always had. If this is the last time I can see her when I'm hugging her, you know, just saying bye, knowing she's in somebody else's care. Can she manage herself? I don't want to put out it to mind her. That's very important. We all have medical duties. But that's not who we are. My allergies don't stop me from doing anything. When I go to school, it's a big responsibility to have to take care of myself to make sure I don't need like things that have my food allergies in it. Yeah. I think the future will bring me good health and like no more allergies is what I'm hoping. Thank you, Master General Hospital. The end. <laughs>
I have over 20 years to now I so I know how it feels to constantly think about what I eat and what I touch. I know that's heavy with allergies because everywhere I go, I'm reading ingredients, carrying an EpiPen, and bringing my own food everywhere. I've never been able to buy a lunch and I cannot use recess equipment or even plan on biscuits at any parts so that wash my hands immediately. My allergies include milk, eggs, wheat, peanuts, tree nuts, rye, barley, mustard, flaxseed, kiwi, turkey, chicken, and many more. I've had over 20 allergic reactions and I have already used my African many times. Food allergy flavor and signs. Did you know that one in 13 children have food allergies? You can keep children safe by following these steps. Eat all food in the picnic area, wipe your hands with a one of these hand wipe. In addition, it's important to know that when people eat food at a park and then touch the playground equipment, the residue from the food will stay in the playground equipment. This could cause a person with severe allergies to have a life-threatening reaction. Also, did you know that hand sanitizer does not remove food portions from your hands? What is a food allergy? A food allergy is an allergic reaction that someone can have if they eat certain foods. If a person eats that food, they can become very sick or even die. What is Massachusetts General Hospital doing to help people with food allergies? There is still no care for people with food allergies. However, Mass General Hospital is doing studies that you can participate in. There's a study that I am in called the Milk Patch Study, and I have been doing it for over three years. This study is helping me tolerate a small amount of milk by wearing a small patch on my back that I have to wear every day. <coughs> I'm hoping to get into more studies that will help my food allergies and others as well. What is an anaphylactic reaction? An anaphylactic reaction is a severe reaction that can include symptoms such as throwing up, itchy throat, swollen throat, not breathing, hives, <coughs> swelling lips, swelling tongue, dizziness, weak pulse, and passing out. What is the food allergy wear color? The food allergy wear color is teal. If this color is added to parks, it can help remind people to be more aware. Or if you see it, you should try to be cautious. What are the most common food allergies? The most common food allergies are milk, eggs, peanuts, tree nuts, wheat, soy, shellfish, and fish. The end. Thank you for allowing me to have some of your time to share with you some information about this topic. I hope that we can put up signs in town and beyond to promote awareness that food allergies. I also want to say thank you to Mrs. Chamber and my fourth grade teacher for helping me make this possible. Thank you. I did not know that teal was the food allergy awareness color. That's, that's great. You want to show the signs? We have the signs made up. Uh, we've got 10 signs in the office right now that we'll be posting at, uh, we're going to start at the EMC right around the dedication. And then we'll be posting signs at all the elementary schools and uh, all the other um, schools with playground areas throughout the town. And uh, we wanted to thank the school department and the Parks and Rec department for working with us to get this uh, all accomplished. So, thank you very much. It was a great job. Yes. Thank you so much. I'd just like to say, <clears throat> I, uh, I'm, I'm a coach in town. I was telling the parents here that in order to coach, you now have to pass a, t a test on food allergy for the safety of the kids under your care. And I took it yesterday, and I didn't know if this is happening, but I'm glad to share that with you and to help you know that the coaches are aware, they have to be, about some, I mean, some of the risks. That they're not, they're not uh, Mass General trained and uh, ready to do all the procedures that they do, but at least they know how to handle emergencies, which is uh, you know, important. And I'm a physician, and it was important for me to hear this because there's a lot there I didn't know. Thank you, Thank you very much. Great. Thank you for coming. Yes, thank really you. appreciate yeah. you taking the time. It's a thank great you. presentation. Yeah, good job. <laughs> and we'll give you a call when we're uh, 
getting ready, getting the date set to uh, hang the sun. Hang the sun. Right. Amazing. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 So, the next order of business is the is a motion to approve the director's mileage expenses on page five. Motion to approve. Second. Yeah. How do I do? <laughs> <laughs> All in favor, aye. And after that, we have the request to approve the director's Massachusetts Health Officers Association Massachusetts Department of Envi Environmental Protection Sanitation Annual Spring Seminar. It's a $75 res res registration fee. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor, yes. yes. We'll, All be, right. uh, no? we'll be co president, uh, we'll be a co presenter at that. Uh, oh, great. That working with the DEP. On? on uh, so, zoonotic disease and climate change. Great. Nice. Excellent. Good job. And our next order of business is the annual report that was included in the package. Uh, yeah. um, I thought it looked really good. I, I thought it was great. I thought I it was great. So thank you for getting it together. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's, it's a great summary of what we what, what has been accomplished uh, before I was here and some of while I was here. Yeah. It's so good to learn you, about you it. You guys did a really nice job pulling it together in short order. So do you need a motion to approve this? Yes, this one, yes, because it has to go to the annual town report for the town. So it's just motion, motion to, to approve. Support. Second. All in favor, there we go. Um, we cannot start the public hearing until so six o'clock, so we can do a little bit of the director's report until oh, six, is so that? We don't, have, a, we, we don't yeah. have one, so we will, we can take a, so we'll just wait until six. We have to wait for others who might be coming. That was a great presentation. Public hearing order. Good evening and welcome to the Board of Health hearing for the proposed tobacco two tire free structure and sunsetting language. Uh, this public hearing is televised. The following is the purpose, order, and conduct for the hearing. The purpose is for the Board of Health to receive information upon which to base its decision from interested citizens and residents to execute the tobacco to tire fee structure and sunsetting language. The Board will, help, will hear comments from those in support or opposition, if any. After comments are voiced, the board will address any concerns or questions, if any, and will request for additional comments or questions that are not repetitive. The board will discuss as to the need of any additional information, if any. The board will announce its decision, if any. The chairman will request a motion to either continue or close the public hearing. The board will entertain a motion for a vote, if any. Next is the conduct for citizens and residents. Each person must identify oneself. Each person may speak only once in support or opposition. All comments and questions must be addressed to the Board of Health. If there are questions, they will be noted by the Board of Health who will determine those which it finds pertinent to the matter. The Board of Health Chairman may limit repetitive comments. And now the chairman is going to recite the two items and its language. So there are two items that we're proposing as changes in our current regulations. The first is under tobacco permitting, section 8.5. And it reads as follows. As of March 16, 2020, any permit not renewed either because a retailer no longer sells tobacco products as defined herein or because a retailer closes the retail business shall be returned to the Hopkinton Board of Health 
and shall be permanently retired by the Board of Health and the total allowable number of tobacco product sales permits under paragraph 8.5.9.1 shall be reduced by the number of the retired permits. The second regulation under uh, discussion in the hearing tonight is under fees, section 2.8. As of March 16, 2020, the department will issue two separate tobacco licenses. One permit at $100 per year may be obtained for the sale of cigarettes, chew, snuff, cigar products, and any other, and other non-electronic products. A second permit at $100 per year may be obtained for the sale of all e-cigarette products. So those are the two items under consideration this evening. If there are any uh, comments or questions from people in the audience following the process that Nadia laid out, um, feel free to raise them now. Uh, my name is Cynthia Estheimer. I live at 118 Hayward Street. I'm very interested in this process to um, better regulate tobacco products, but I am not aware of what they currently are. Um, I appreciate knowing how many tobacco licenses or permits exist today. And my second question would be, um, what do you imagine tobacco product allowances would be in five and ten years? Would they disappear? Or what do you think is going to happen? So I think our health director can answer the first one. The second one, I don't feel as though we can speculate as to what's going to happen in five years. I don't think we have an idea of what's going to, to how everything is changing. Uh, but the first one, how many current? So we, we currently have nine permits, uh, and of those nine, not all of them have e-cigarettes or sell e-cigarettes. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, it's it's hard to say where this is going. Um, it's the general concept is that we're trying not to normalize the sale and use of. Mm -hmm. uh, tobacco products, or at least e-cigarette products, and um, this is a step to kind of bring the town and the region in um, on a uh, kind of a similar regulatory path. Any other comments or questions? Yes. <laughs> so, um, the same person I was a moment ago. Um, if the Board of Health in Hopkinton were to find out that there was something explicitly and emergently uh, problematic or a health concern about e-cigarettes, would the Board intervene with the selling of those products if, if you were to become aware that there was something definitively emergently wrong? So the Board of Health has a lot of authority to intervene in public health situations. I think we take our cue from Massachusetts Department of Public Health and work very carefully with them. Uh, and in that case, just as the governor this past year issued the e-cigarette ban, we would do it in concert with what Massachusetts Department of Public Health is doing. Any other questions or comments? May I comment, please? please. I, thought that, I thought more folks would be here. I greatly appreciate that the board is considering this and taking this step. I think it sets a wonderful example for all of our young people. And as difficult as it is for older adults to make changes, I think it's also a subtle, um, a gentle push to consider the use of tobacco products a little differently. And I appreciate that you're doing this. Thank you. Other comments, questions? So at this point, um, we have to wait for how long? 
or we have to wait until 6.15. So uh, the hearing is scheduled until 6.15, so uh, at 6.15 we will um, entertain our business motions as to whether or not we need to continue or we can close the hearing. Um, based on that, we will then uh, vote on each of the, uh, assuming that the hearing is going to be closed, we would then vote on each of the regulations, but we cannot do that until 6.15, so we will wait. Can you identify yourself, please? Sure. Uh, my name is Brian Moran, Director of Government Affairs for the New England Convenience Store and Energy Marketers Association. Uh, my name is Brian Moran, and I'm Director of Government Affairs for the New England Convenience Store and Energy Marketers Association. Uh, just a question, the hearing closes. Is there an opportunity to submit written testimony? Or is the board's action final at 6.30? There today? was, sir. We had advertised that. Okay, just a clarification question. Yes, yes. there was, so we, we were accepting okay. any type Hi, of tonight. written comments prior to the hearing. Okay. Yes. Uh, one other question I had was on the March 16th, 2020 deadline. As of that date, if you haven't renewed yet, but how does that work if you're not up? Are they all on date certain, renewal dates, a common date? They're all on, so we're on a, a we're on an annual renewal date, which is July, uh, July 1st, and then um, yeah, there is, yeah, it, we're on an annual renewal date, July 1st. So the, so the annual renewal date of July 1st, 2020, hasn't arrived yet. Right. So if they don't renew by March 16th, so are you, are you moving it forward, or how would that the it really isn't going to. Um, the we wanted to provide um, a month to get the uh, the paperwork in, get the uh, everything signed and approved by the uh, attorney general's office, and uh, and get everything cleared through the clerk's office, um, and then uh, and then really getting the regulation, getting this on the board, it really wouldn't have any bearing on the ability to renew, uh, provided, provided that there were, um, yeah, provided that all the licenses stay the same, or oh, that the uh, status stays the same. So, so it stays July 1. Right. Stays July 1. Stays, stays July, July 1. 1. Right. Okay. This okay. only okay. comes okay. into yeah. effect if an establishment decides no longer to sell product, or if after March 16th, it, there's a, a change in ownership. ownership. Right. Yeah, I just wanted to understand okay. if, say I have an existing convenience store that I own, but my renewal date is until July, July 1st. It will still be July 1. And then, but then this provision almost implied that, you know, I'd have to tell you about the 16th. No, no. And just for clarification for you, the same is true for the double, yeah, um, the, the two fee yeah, structure right. will come up with the next renewal, which would be July 1.
So it's now 6.15, which is the end of the public hearing. So at this point, I'd like to ask my fellow board members whether or not they want the hearing to continue or whether or not we can close the hearing if there's sufficient information to vote on the article. I think we have sufficient information, so I'd make a motion to close the public portion. Second. All in favor. Excellent. And um, in terms of the first proposed change of regulation uh, about the change of um, sales status of tobacco products, is there a, um, do you believe that we are ready to take a vote? I'd say so. Um, so for the first one, I'll make a motion to adopt the regulation as written. I second. All in favor? Aye. For the second one? Do we have sufficient information to take a vote? Yep. Um, so for that one, I'll also make a motion to adopt the regulation as written. Second. All in favor? Aye. And at this point, a motion to close, to adjourn the meeting. Yes? Yes, we don't have anything else. In the Nothing agenda. else? Motion to adjourn? Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Matt. Thanks.